Hi, everyone. Scott Spence here, Artistic Director of the Beck Center, and I'm excited to uh, introduce uh, two more uh, wonderful composer guests that are part of our brand new 5x15, that's five 15-minute musicals, world premieres, all in the same viewing. Uh, today, we are focusing and featuring our eyes on a wonderful new piece called Perpetual Sunshine and the Ghost Girls. Uh, and with us today is Lynn Schenkel, who is our uh, composer of music, uh, and Sarah Cooper, who uh, wrote the words, as she says, uh, lyrics and book. Uh, and so we're really excited to have you. How are you guys doing today? Very good. Yeah. Good to be here. Sheltering in New York, keeping safe. Yes, I'm, I live in New Jersey, so I'm in Jersey, and yes, I, I rarely leave my house. <laughs> we all understand that sentiment all too well, so soon, yeah. fingers crossed, very soon. Yeah. Uh, and um, so let me toss it out to both of you. Uh, just uh, give us a little bit about your background uh, in the industry or out of the industry. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Lynn, we'll start with you. Okay. Okay. Um, I am, I'm known mostly as an arranger and orchestrator. That's, um, that's been the, the meat of, of what I've done um, in New York over the last, you know, 20 years. Um, I've music directed a lot of shows too, um, but I've really turned more towards writing in, in the last decade, um, working on different, uh, different compositional things, sometimes just writing music, sometimes writing music and lyrics. Um, and I've known Sarah for about 10 years, I think. Um, yeah. We actually met on a piece called The Memory Show that she wrote book and lyrics for with music by um, the wonderful Zach Redler, and I was orchestrating. And so we met on that piece, and then we were, you know, kind of looking for something that, that we could work on together. And, uh, and we, we've, we've written two, we're working on two different shows now. So awesome. Exciting. You were the music supervisor or music director for Allegiance on Broadway, is that right? Yeah, I was the music supervisor and the orchestrator and arranger. Um, for those in our audience who don't know Allegiance, that was the George Takei musical of several years back about uh, the internment camps in World War II from the Asian perspective. Uh, so how exciting, I never got to see that, but uh, uh, I hear only wonderful things about it. Sarah, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, sure. Um, so I am, I'm a book writer lyricist. I also sometimes write a little bit of libretto uh, for opera pieces. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I come from a playwriting background and then I took a class when I was under, an undergrad at the Graduate Musical Theater Writing Program um, with uh, Rachel Schenken and Joel Durkner. And I was like, oh, that's what's missing from my playwriting. It's songs. <laughs> And then I realized I wanted to do musical theater uh, and I ended up going there and learning how to write musical theater. And now I teach there also. Um, and I, yeah, I want to second the, the glory of meeting Lynn. <laughs> we, so we, we met on the memory show. Um, and then uh, I was sort of like preoccupied with her writing. I just couldn't stop thinking about how great she is. And I was, I'm so glad that we reconnected because then we wrote the show hot together. Um, and now here we are working on Perpetual Sunshine and the Ghost Girls. Oh, awesome. Uh, and the bomb. Yeah. <laughs> so, an interesting side story is I was cleaning my office the last 10 days or so, chipping away at it. And Sarah, I came across one, one of your scripts. So oh. imagine that. I can't tell you which one it is, but I will, I promise. But it That's may be something that Vicky gave me several years ago. So that's that a connection. So more, more soon on that one. Um, which one of you would like to talk a little bit more about uh, what's happening with uh, uh, Perpetual Sunshine, a little bit about the piece? Describe it, if you will. Sarah, you should you should start this one. Sure, I'll start and then you jump in because I'm very bad at this. <laughs> so um, Perpetual Sunshine and the Ghost Girls is, um, it's sort of about the exploitation of women and workers. It takes place in a factory in the 1920s. It's a full length piece, but uh, what we're gonna see with you, thank you for doing this, is um, the first 15 minute chunk of it. Uh, so it's about these women uh, who in the 1920s worked in watch factories and were they were painting, um, Watch, watch faces by licking brushes filled with radium and painting onto the watch faces. And the company knew that it was, this is a real story. The company knew that it was poisoning them um, and they still let them do it. And it was just, it was a horrible tragedy that resulted in a lot of death. Um, but they ended up changing labor laws for the entire country and they ne you never hear about them. So we were sort of compelled to write about them and tell their story. It's, it's really interesting, Scott. It, it, the, the, the whole thing took place in real life at the U.S. Radium Company, 
um, which interestingly is about 15 minutes from where I live, the site of, of the U.S. radium company. And, and um, you know, and all of this happened after, after World War I, and I believe it was in World War I where um, they, they used um, watches that had faces painted with radium because it glowed in the dark. And so the soldiers could see. And then it became, um, it, it became a, a, a fashion thing, like a, a beauty thing. It was kind of like, I don't know, I guess the kind of the equivalent of like the Botox of, of the <laughs> 1920s. You know, people, people thought it was the fountain of youth and, and radium not only was in on the faces of these watches, but it was in beauty products that that women bought, and it was sold, 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 um, and 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 but but no one was telling anyone that it could kill you. You yeah. know, I think they didn't know that at first, but then you know they they it became clear. You know, once women in this factory who were licking these brushes started becoming ill and really ill and and horrible things happened to them in 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 real life like a, a woman went to the dentist and her entire jawbone just came out like the dentist just took it out of it fell out because she was so filled with radium it's yeah. it's a crazy story but as sarah said it did what it, the, the women died sadly but um what did happen was uh, the first labor laws in the United States about, um, you know, regulations in the workplace came because of these women. And as yeah. Sarah mentioned, this is unique uh, in our five mini musicals because this is the only one that is really 15 minutes of the rest of what will be a longer musical while our other four pieces are all self-contained beginning, middle, and end. So this is unique and probably that gives this one a chance to have a greater and further life uh, down the road. So how far along are you? Uh, we just have a, a minute or so left. How far along are you in the process of writing the entire piece? Well, we have, so we have um, the first chunk written with music. Um, and then we have sort of a rough full, full draft of the libretto. I have an interesting story about the libretto. <laughs> the day after I finished the rough draft, um, I happened to talk to, to my uncle who I don't talk to every day or anything. And I was he was like, what are you working on? And I told him about the story. And he's like, oh, your great aunt, your great aunt worked in one of those factories. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a wow moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Well, um, you know, I wish we had some more time, but we're trying to keep this short. And we want to intrigue everyone and just wet their whistle a little bit to come see our five world premiere musicals. Uh, you can begin streaming those on February 12th through the 28th. And this is our collaboration with Baldwin Wallace University. So the entire thing is uh, is acted by, in this case, a powerhouse all-female cast. Yay! Yay. Um, awesome. Eight to ten, I believe. It's a pretty good-sized cast. So I've already seen some production stills from it, and uh, it's going to be really excited. And this one's directed by our very own Vicki Bussick. I thank you both so much for spending a little time with me today. Uh, and uh, we'll be catching up with you soon as we get a little closer. Thank you so much, Scott. We can't wait. So Take care. Care.